everybody! I'm back for my latest floss tube video. As you can see, I am back in Devon, in my mother's office today. One day I'm hoping that every single video doesn't have to be um, started with, this is the place that I'm in because I'm moving around so much. Ugh. Um, I'm hoping to be in Bristol by the end of May, so fingers crossed that happens. Anyway, um, I'm back in Devon and I'm in my mum's office because she is in Africa for a month working and it means that I have this space to mess around in for the next month. I got back from London on Monday and in my previous video I had promised you guys that I would show you the finished bunny moon, the finished, 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 finished bunny moon. I don't have it. <laughs> I spent a really long time wondering how I was going to actually send it to them. I've talked about it on my videos for the whole time I've been doing floss tube, and I just decided that I wasn't happy sending it as a finished object, partly because it could get damaged in the post, but also because with everything that happened, mainly not enough floss, um, I didn't have enough time to send it, so I had to send it via a slightly faster method and it was cost prohibitive to send it as a, as like a really big finished thing because it would have been la much larger than an A4 piece of paper and the packaging costs were just ridiculous. So long story short, I sent it as a an ironed folded piece with instructions on how to iron it when they got it back and then I said that I would give them instructions on how to frame it if they wanted to do that and otherwise I would pay for them to get it framed in Auckland um, and it's gone off into the ether. I'm hoping it gets there soon. The birthday is... I think it's next week sometime. I'm not entirely sure what day, what day it is. Yes, that is gone and I'm hoping that I'll get an FFO photo for you guys soon because I would like to see it as well. It felt strange to send off something that I had been working on for so long and it's just gone. Vanished. <laughs> Didn't enjoy it. So what am I working on now? I My rotation has kind of gone to pot. Um, I have it written down somewhere but things have been so strange in the last couple of months that it's sort of just died a death almost. <laughs> I'm going to dig it out in the next few days and go through it again but just been making stuff up as I go along in the meantime. While I was in London because I was there for longer than I had planned um, I had taken some knitting but my RSI with my knitting is just so bad whereas with stitching it's it's easier on my hands. So John sent me off to John Lewis one day and he was like, "You, if you come back without cross stitch I will be mad. So I came back with cross stitch. Um, I spent ages looking at the kits that were in John Lewis but they don't have a really good selection to be honest. Um, they, do, they did have some cute charts by Rico but I got those free in a magazine a few months previously so they were, po they were pointless. There was no point spending loads of money buying them. I decided to just use all the patterns I already had. I bought some fabric and then because I didn't have any of them with me because they're all on my laptop the only one that I could remember the colours for was this Plum Street sampler which uses red, green and black. So this is where I am at the moment. Now I'd be surprised if you don't know what this is if you watch Floss Tube because it was all over the place um, last year. In November Paulette Stewart who is the designer released the first three motifs and said that she was going to be releasing them free every Sunday in the lead up to Christmas and everybody was stitching along and I really wanted to join in but I just didn't have enough time. I am very nearly finished on the first day, I just have to finish writing day here, there's a little couple that goes here and then this is December 25. Um, it, don't ask me about the state of my needle minder. Basically these two earth magnets are from another one that broke and this is my button one But they're just there for safekeeping until I make a new one. I don't even know <laughs> So that's going well. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna work on it anymore It is only April and I mainly just started it to have something to do So I think that one might go away for a while until some of my other stuff is done because like there are other things that I need to get done so the leopard is you are not going to see much difference. I have worked on this since the last time I talked about it, but not a lot. I'm so close to finishing here, it goes to about there. Um, and I stitched on it a lot last night. I really, really like the effect of the tree that's come out here. Um, anyway, 
this is what I'm working on this week and I'm hoping to make some good progress on it. But every time I take it out I feel like I say that and I'm trying not to hold myself too accountable to my schedule because I wrote up the schedule of what I was going to do because it's a birthday present or a Christmas present, I haven't decided which, and I just wanted to get it done but it was stressing me out so much that I found I wasn't working on it so I'm going to hold back on that and just do what I like when I like. I also had this commission piece that I was talking about last time, I've done basically nothing on it. You can probably see that I haven't been doing a lot of cross stitch really in the last month just because my RSI has been bad and I've been really busy. Anyway, this is another new um, design. I've only just started it, there's only that there. I'd be interested to know if you can guess what it is from that so I'm not going to tell you what it actually is. But this is a baby sampler design that is slightly more urgent than the other ones so working on that during the day. And that's it for what I'm working on. Now I did have something that I wanted to sort of talk about with you guys because this is what I've been doing a lot over the last few days. I found a massive stack of magazines, cross stitch magazines, that I've been collecting for the last however long and decided that I wanted to give them my normal treatment. So what my normal treatment is, I take, my, I take the magazine and I open it up in the middle and I remove the staples and then I cut straight up the middle crease so that I end up with my magazine exactly as it was except that it's cut and it's all individual pages. And then I go through and I extract all of the pages that are like adverts and articles and things. If it's a good article I'll keep it in a separate place and all of the patterns then get sorted into file folders. So I put them all into plastic sleeves and then they get sorted depending on what they are. Like Cross Stitch Crazy do 50 small motifs most month, most months that conform to a theme, like there's Christmas themes and there's been floral and all, the, all those sorts of things, cars. So they all go into one section. Then there's another section which is samplers, so that's like baby samplers, wedding samplers, stitch samplers, you know, anything that really has text in it that is kind of clearly sort of a sampler form. Another section which is cards and then the fourth section is like pictures and de decorative stuff I suppose. Samplers and the decorative picture-y type things, they kind of intermingle with each other and I just make the decision based on what I think. Um, and the only reason that I really do all of that sorting is to make it easier to find those patterns later on. Then what I do is I take photos of everything that I've just put in and I upload it onto my cross stitch app which a lot of people talk about. Carolyn Mazio does a really good um, tutorial on that if you would like to find out more about that one. And then I also have an Excel spreadsheet where I categorise like what, what, the, what they are, who the designer is, where they're from. Um, what the kind of genre is, so like Christmas, baby, floral, nature, that kind of stuff. And then I also make a note of which folder it's in, and at some point in the future I intend to also do page numbers, but I haven't got that far yet. Whew, so that's all quite complicated, and it's been massively irritating putting it together. I've been doing it over several years, but it's only really in the last sort of week that it's kind of starting to come together in an, in an actual system as opposed to just me preserving the patterns and then putting them away in a place so that I can look at them later and now I guess is the later. What do you guys do? Like I'm really interested to know how you sort your patterns. Obviously if it's from a book then the book can go into a bookcase and that's fine but like when you buy a pattern do you print it and then put it somewhere or do you have a folder on your computer? Um, so what I've been doing when I buy patterns is printing them out and then putting them into these folders with all the magazine type stuff as well. And if I find free patterns on the internet, rather than thinking, oh, I'll bookmark this and come back to it later, I know I'll forget about it. So I just print it straight away and then stick it into my file folders. And I put it all into plastic sleeves. I used to do it so that it was like those books that had the, the inserting sleeves like already in the books and it came with like a hundred sleeves or whatever but then I found that in order to reorder the patterns I'd have to take them out the sleeve and then put them back in so I started doing the removable sleeve files instead and then like with my kits when I buy them normally I'll photocopy the pattern straight away just so that if I fold anything and any symbols get deteriorated then I know what they were and then they all go into the folders as well normally once they're out of a project bag when I'm actually working on a project I have 
a fabric project bag. This started with my knitting, so my knitting would just go in here, pattern all the bits that I needed, plus the knitting and the needles and the yarn. So I just carried on doing it for cross stitch, but I've had to change my system slightly because it doesn't work quite as well with cross stitch. Um, obviously with the leopard being on the frame, it's too big for me to put in the bag, but normally I will put like here is that commission piece and it's just in, in the bag there, um, uncovered. And I want to change that system slightly because I'm finding that the fabric gets a bit grubby. Anyway, in the leopard bag I've got my magnifying glass, I've got my pattern and my, my key to the colours and the symbols and all that stuff. And I've got a pencil in case I need it, but I generally don't tend to write on the patterns. And then I, ha I have like a little baggie that's full of my bobbins and it normally has the scissors in, but I'm using the scissors at the moment. Um, and then also here, I was talking last week about how I cut up my pattern and then use the small pieces instead of the full pattern. So here I've got like a bulldog clip with all of my pattern pieces in it. And then at the back here is number five. So whenever I finish with the thing, it goes onto the back. So obviously number six is the one I'm working on. Um, so that the one on top is always the next one because I find that I need to refer to it if I'm parking. And then I also have in my bag, if I can put this away, this dude which is a Twizzler. I've talked about this so many times, basically just like a wing nut goes in there and you can use it to tighten up your frames or your hoops. And then also my Orts thing um, and I also in my handbag I have an Orts bucket box type thing as well which is just an empty chewing gum box box. I don't really keep the orts for anything in particular, but I don't like leaving them lying around. I discovered that my family really hates that, so I've become very um, picky about making sure I pick up all my stray threads and put them into an orts box. So that's how I organise my stitchy life. I'm hoping that once I move to Bristol I'll have a proper craft room which is inside and not outside in a barn, which is where my studio is at the moment. Um, and it's very windy and cold so I hardly ever go there and as a result I have th things like everywhere in my room, in my studio, all over the house so I'm hoping that once we move I can be more organised about that but for now this is this is the system that I'm using. The reason everything goes on to, into a project bag is because I then put this on a hanger in a closet so I have a whole closet which is quite extravagant I know dedicated to spinning, knitting and cross stitch projects all in their own individual bags and that is that. Okay I haven't planned to make this a tag video but I've kind of retroactively done it now. <laughs> so you've just had that whole big discussion about um, what I what I what I do. So the questions for the tag are going to be number one how do you organize your magazines? Number two how do you organize your kits? Number three how do you organize digital patterns? Number four, how do you organise books? So obviously I've just t told you all that books go in a bookcase and then everything else goes into file folders organised by four categories, small motifs, cards, samplers and other. Next question will be, what do you keep with your whips? One thing that I forgot while I was talking about it is I always have a screwdriver as well um, because most of my projects are on embroidery hoops and to get the tension nice and tight I keep a screwdriver. I must be one of the only people on the planet who walks around with a screwdriver in the handbag but whatever. Number six, how do you store your whips when they're not in use? So I put mine into a wardrobe. Number seven, where do you store your finished objects before they become fully finished objects? So I have a like plastic box thing that is quite large and they all go in there once they've been ironed. Normally this is not an issue for me because if and if something's an FO it becomes an FFO almost immediately and if not then something is done with it so I don't really have to do that. Number eight, do you have any other tips for organising your cross stitch that you think other people would be interested in? I would love to know. If you do these tags then please let me know, I would love to see your videos. While I'm on that note I am a little bit behind on my floss tube videos but I'm catching up um, and I'm hoping that I will be able to be up to date soon, that would be cool. Alright, I am going to go now because this has turned into a much bigger video than I planned it to, but I hope you have a really wonderful day and you enjoy your stitching and I will see you guys all next time. Bye!